Hello, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. The letter L is pretty straightforward to outline. This time I've enlarged it to 150% and it's going on to a 6 by 6 inch card. You'll need to be able to print to a larger sheet like 11 by 17 or what they call tabloid in order to get everything to ratio. Now my strip was not long enough so I'll be joining here and here. But you guys are pros at this so it's not a big deal. I'm going to tackle this inside corner first and I've used removable tape here to set a plastic card in place to help guide my strip straight. So I don't know if you can see this in the video but this is the inside part of that letter L. So as usual I'll just be putting down a bead of glue and smearing it flat. And this time I'm going to glue here and here at the same time. So when I press up against my card they'll set those two sides at the same time, okay? So just make sure to dip your glue just on those two sides. And when I'm doing two at a time, I'm going to be careful to keep one hand up in the air while I glue so that, you know, I don't get glue globs all over my work surface. And, you know, sometimes if you're not sure, just check underneath to make sure that all the glue covered all the surfaces where you need. So I'm going to do this side first. And with this hand, I'm going to keep this side up in the air. Paper can actually be kind of forgiving a little bit and until you press down sometimes you do have some flexibility. Okay, so I'm going to remove my template now. Okay, I hadn't really thought this through and I realized I really should have used my other transport card from Singapore because it's got the thinner type of plastic. So I really should have put the glue on this card first because I'll be sliding it underneath the letter, these other parts. So it would be better to use the thinner one instead. Now to make sure that the glue doesn't touch the card, I'm going to raise the whole strip up into the air and dab the glue on the bottom edge. And it would have been smart if I'd actually put the template in place to help guide myself too. But you guys can learn from my mistake. So as I'm putting it down, I'm gently just tugging with my tweezer a little bit towards the right so that it goes down straight. Okay, so I've got my remaining piece and I'm just going to dip that into the glue and set it in place. And with this side of my finger, I'm just going to gently press up against here so that this piece can meet up against it at the same time. If you want, maybe just use your card again to see how there's a little waiver there. Just straighten that out against the card. And how handy, I've got that leftover piece to now use to finish off those edges. Now I've decided to let the letter come more towards this side of the card because I really wanted a large expanse to work with. It's one of the few letters other than say the letter I that allows you to play with so much and because it just lends the eye to follow that movement I really wanted to make something you know more showy right here. 
These are what I call cut coil flowers. They're really fun to make and just let me show you how. So this is an 11 inch strip and I'm just going to arbitrarily eyeball into thirds. Doesn't have to be exact. Now this is a crochet hook and the circumference is about 3 16 I'm going to treat it as a quilling needle, albeit with a large inner hole. I'm just going to wrap it tightly around my crochet hook and slide it off and keep the coils coiled, okay? So what I'm going to look for is the beginning of that inside strip. And so I found it right there. So I'm going to put my scissor in there and crimp right where that is. So I, I'm going to let go of this hand, you see, and so the scissor is holding all these coils in place. So now with my left hand, I'm going to pinch in the opposite part of where the scissors are. So I'm going to pinch like that. Do you see? And then I'm going to cut. I'm going to discard the outermost petal that's not quite complete. And well, I'll set it aside for now anyway. Now, do you see how these petals are just a little straight? I just want to give them some oomph. So do you see how I just gave it, fattened them up a little bit? <laughs> That's what I want. I want juicy, nice petals here. So then I'm going to separate them out to make it easier to handle. And you can see how each ring that comes out, they get larger as they go. Just magical that way, right? So I've already done quite a few here. Um, I just had another strip of 11 inch. So with this strip, I'm actually going to take my real needle and I'm going to do the innermost petal now. So just this once, I want to have it nice and tight. So you can decide where, where you want that to be. I'm going to take that one and basically dip these two edges into the glue. And then I'm going to basically attach it to the innermost coil. And I had a friend who taught me about random things. So we were doing jewelry together and she told me, you know, it's okay to have your beads randomized. And the orderly mind that I had struggled with that concept because it just thought, what? Random? To my surprise, I discovered I enjoy the random look. So this is my ode to my friend um, who taught me that random is lovely. I guess I should have put the petals the other way because I'm grabbing them in that same direction. So, you know, learn from my <laughs> slow method here. It would have been smarter for me to have pointed all these petals the opposite direction. Just makes picking them up faster. For yourself. So I'm just going to basically kiss the glue. That's what I call this when I just dip a little bit and you just get a little bit covered and as I build and you'll notice as I build when these were cut you'll see how it's slightly off at an angle. It's not quite straight. You can straighten them all but I don't mind that they're randomly weird and off cut and stuff so to me it, it just it doesn't bother me that you know it, one side's longer than another one is warped it, it doesn't I actually like it so to each their own um, if it bothers you trim it if not then just go with the warped kind of look so as I'm working I'm taking the smallest petals first and just adding it to my flower wherever I want and so it's just all random because you know mother nature is random as well too 
And now as I'm gluing, there is one sort of accurate thing that I try to go for here. So if you pretend that this is, this is where the petal is, even though I'm putting it randomly, I'm carefully making sure that my eye is measuring a line, sort of imaginary line from here out to here so that my petals don't go like, they don't go off shooting like that or like that, they go outward so that your eye has a little bit of symmetry that way. And as I go around, because the strips are cut a little wonky, I am constantly touching the top of it with my finger to make sure I'm using my table surface to keep everything straight. As you work your way outward, the petals are, they, they should technically be larger. So to enlarge your petals, it's really easy. All you have to do is just widen it like that. And then all of a sudden, it just looks like an older petal. Okay, now that's, that's a bit too much glue. So I'm gonna smear some off. And even though these two have come detached, it, you know, if it bothers you, you can, you can put it back. But funny enough, sometimes I, I actually like little things that happen like that because then I'll attach this part of the petal just to the side of it so it's not so perfect. And just keep working your way around as you build your flower. So I've got these three made here. And you'll see, do you see how this wasn't even exactly fully developed? I just kind of developed all on one side. That's because when you look at a whole bunch of flowers, they are not all facing you at one time. Some of them get obscured. So I kind of like that look and it doesn't look so perfectly formed all the time. Like this, this guy's fully facing us. This guy's kind of hiding behind the letter L. This guy's just kind of appearing from beside these two. So I'll basically, you know, maneuver it around and around until I like what I see. If that's what I like, then I'll just continue adding some purple there. And whatever you want to do with your card is, is, is going to turn out great. Okay, so I've glued the flowers down and as you can see, there's these gaps. So at this point, I'm taking a softened strip and I'm going to imagine the next petal will be going into the letter like that and being cut off. So all I do is lay it on top of my flower and that negative space and let this nail come to rest against where this letter is here, where it's intersecting and just make a simple cut like that. That's how I measure it. Then you would just dip your piece, your edges and glue here, here, and here, and just put it into place. Then you can just add some greenery wherever you want, and it just gives it your eye some movement. And I'm not sure how this card is turning out just yet. So uh, I guess you'll see at the end when I'm done but basically just continue working it that way. Then because the letter L is so open and weak, basically because there are no structural parts to it, you can add some simple scroll work just by just doing like a simple scroll like this. You can see in some previous videos how I've done that and you can build some structural integrity with this and just make it more playful and full so it balances out the card. Don't forget to pick up a little bit of glue on the tip of your needle tool and slide it in between the outline and your scrolls so that you have more structural strength that way. Want to be the first to know when I put out my latest video tutorial? Subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it two thumbs up or leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.